Has anyone checked to see if they got cell signal? Can we make it? It's official. We're lost. Hey, I'm in my office. Look at this. I think we can make it. I mean, you want me to check first? I think it's... And see? We're going for it. Hey Salukis, I'm Jeff Gleam, Executive Director of the SIU Alumni Association. And welcome to another edition of Saluki Sleuths. This might be our most adventurous sleuth ever. We're going underground into the elaborate system of the steam tunnels. They're secret, so we can't tell you where they are, but they are everywhere on campus. We hope you find something interesting in this episode. I think you will. And here's Anna Toomey with more. Underneath the streets Saluki's cross and the buildings where they attend class is another world many have no idea exists. You know, obviously I think we'll go under this as opposed to over, uh, so watch your head as we go under. Tall enough and wide enough for a person to walk through, the steam tunnels are the skeleton of Southern Illinois University. They've heated and cooled classrooms, offices, and dorm rooms since the 1950s. The tunnels also carry phone lines and electricity through campus. There was a lot of rumors and things about the tunnels, even for me growing up in the area and being on campus. So it was definitely one of those unique opportunities that I had as part of the facilities department to get in and view the tunnels and really learn how they work. Mark Owens will be our tour guide on this adventure underground. This is a unique and special opportunity. We often uh, don't take people down into the steam tunnels. He says there are roughly four miles of steam tunnels servicing SIU, all reinforced by concrete. The steam tunnel system was built as a district system to supply steam to buildings across campus and also to provide condensate return back to the power plant. The power plant is the heart of the steam system. And so our power plant produces the steam through our boiler system, pumps it to roughly 70 buildings across campus. So we're always producing steam, even in the summer. The tunnels are very difficult to access and are usually hidden in locations only maintenance crews know about. And the access points, uh, they're quite discreet uh, in, in areas that uh, are in mechanical rooms and, and things like that that student and the public uh, wouldn't have access to. We start our journey underneath the engineering building near Banterra Center. Yes, but this is an example of steam pipes that are going through the tunnel. Um, and so this is an area where the tunnel was built and intersected into another tunnel. And so as you can see, we can go left, we can go right. If we went right here, we go to the arena. We check the maps, which organize the steam tunnels by color, indicating how long ago they were built. So we do have some steam tunnels that have an unknown date as far as when they were constructed, but the power plant itself was constructed in the late 40s. And so the first steam tunnels were constructed in the late 40s. And then as we added buildings to the system, we would put in the tunnels and connect those buildings to that district heat system. The tunnels have been able to expand as the university expands. This section underneath the engineering building was more difficult to pass through. So we headed to our next stop, the tunnels underneath the communications building. Well, this tunnel, uh, this one was built in 1979. Um, and it's somewhat unique because of the circular shape of the concrete forms that they use. So this is where you see the steam pipe. It's the top, it's the larger pipe. Below is the condensate and then uh, a water line below that. So this is part of what you find when you walk in the tunnel. This portion of the tunnels could take you to the outermost part of the whole system. So if we go left, that would connect to the lesser law building, it's the westmost portion. And if we go straight, then this goes in and connects to some other tunnels that service uh, some of the residence halls. We come across a hole in the wall that opens up to the surface. Mark says this hole helps give the steam somewhere to go. So this is a cold air return. So this is venting the heat out of the tunnel. As you feel, it's quite cool as the cold air comes in, a few leaves have have escaped down here, so. 
most of the tunnels are at least six feet tall, some of them six foot six. So it's easy to walk through here and easy for maintenance to get in and make repairs. Other parts of the tunnel are a little bit trickier to navigate where you would actually have to crawl under the pipes to get there. So when a repair is needed, such as a leak, maintenance crews carefully plan out how to get both the supplies and the equipment down into the tunnels to make that repair. Just a, uh, an example of one of the valves to the high pressure steam line itself, what they would shut off if they were to repair a piece of pipe, do maintenance, segregate a section of the, the pipe. How do they flag a problem for repair and how do you find so it? So if there's a you know, maintenance run through and they find something that needs to repair, a lot of times there's labeling on the tunnel and so they can reference the map and say, okay, this is the exact section of tunnel where the repair needs to be done. Although many sections of the steam tunnels are much older than the students and staff who walk above them, Mark says the system is extremely efficient and can conserve 85% of the water it initially puts out to heat and cool campus. It's a process called condensate return. So as steam goes out, and that's domestic water that we use in our boiler to create the steam, it goes out and it hits our coils and things like that, that heat. And so eventually that reaches a temperature where that steam turns back to water. So, and so that goes back into the system, so it's a loop system, and that condensate return goes back into the power plant to be heated again. Mark says the facilities department tracks how much steam is going to which building. So this steam, as it goes to different buildings, it's metered just like any other utility. Oh. So we might know how much heat, how much steam, say, one of the towers is using. Don't worry, I'm getting all the cobwebs for you guys. All right. Okay, that's why you put me first. <laughs> we asked Mark if there's any way to start at one steam tunnel entrance and end up back at the SIU Alumni Association headquarters in Woody Hall. It's possible, but Mark has never explored that passage before. We start under Quigley Hall. Right now, we're just leaving Quigley Hall, and we are heading west. We have a nice way finding this way to Woody uh, and Shryock. Uh, Behind me is Woody Hall, and so we'd be on the south side of Woody Hall right now, six feet under. Uh, <laughs> approximately four miles of tunnels. And so I guess do the math as far as how, how fast you want to walk. Here's another air intake. So it's kind of hard to see, but we're really just from here to ground level, probably four or five feet. I've actually never been beyond this point in the tunnel, so not sure what's in store, but should be an adventure. Mark and the rest of us had no idea what would be around each corner. There's just enough light in the steam tunnels to navigate without a flashlight in most areas. I think we can make it. I mean, you want me to check first and see before you crawl over? We're going for it. Gotta do some crawling a little bit. Whoa, here we go. It's pretty warm down in the tunnels, but not unbearable. I, I don't know exact temperatures, but it can reach temperatures over 100 degrees. Has anyone checked to see if they got cell signal down here? I doubt it. This is probably the best part here, the unknown. I gotta reference my map again. Oh. Watch your head. It's official, we're lost. No, <laughs> but there is a ladder You're here. Your only way out. <laughs> there is a ladder here that we're going to have to navigate down. Mark says tunnels had to be built around the steam pipes for two very important reasons. Place the reason that you have a tunnel instead of direct bury is because there's expansion with steam in the pipes. And obviously, as the pipes age, you need to maintain them, you need to visually inspect them. And so you need a tunnel so someone can walk through and visually inspect how your pipes are doing and maintain them. It's like uh, maybe a little bit slippery. Let me see where we're going here, I guess, and make sure. I see light at the end of the tunnel. It is a little wet, so watch your head and watch your step. Ow. Are we under Woody yet? Yes. Yes, and that's our way out. <laughs> Did we make it? Already? Right. Well, we're Thanks. getting closer. Getting closer. Looks like one more ladder. Oh. 
This is a little hot, but it's just because of the heat in here. Okay. We ended our adventure through the tunnels right at our front doorstep in Woody Hall. Hey, I'm in my office. Look at this. How about that? Because the tunnels are only a few feet underground, our co-worker Tabretta could hear us from the ground level as we walked right under her feet. I thought that the voices were coming from the stairwell that goes outside, and they actually were coming from the floor. So it was kind of weird that I came out and then I saw everyone. The steam tunnels have been part of campus folklore for decades. Throughout the 80s and 90s, many students attempted to gain access and explore despite the danger. Photos and first-hand accounts have been posted online for those curious. According to an Egyptian newspaper article from 1961, an SIU civil defense expert discusses the steam tunnels as a potential safe space if an H-bomb were to hit southern Illinois or somewhere nearby because the concrete surrounding the tunnels is a foot thick. I don't know if it's the first place I would go just because it's a confined space, but it certainly is, you know, at least through my walks through the tunnel and, and going in, uh, I don't feel unsafe. The concrete is quite thick. SIU grad Todd Sigler was the chief of SIU campus police from 2004 to 2013, but he encountered the tunnels long before then. As a, uh, a police officer uh, working on the midnight shift for many, many years, uh, that was probably my first introduction to uh, the steam tunnels and the interest uh, in the student body uh, with the steam tunnels. For me, the first time down there was, was the first time I'd ever been in that kind of an environment. And so it was very small, very claustrophobic, a lot of uh, items just hanging right at head level. As I moved through the ranks and into the, the chief of police position, it was more about, uh, okay, what can we do about this? This is a safety concern, obviously, uh, both from the standpoint of uh, the steam uh, pressure, the steam uh, pipes that are down there, uh, along with high voltage uh, connections, which was also something that we were quite concerned about. Todd says if a student got in somehow, it was difficult to determine where they were or how they found a way in. It would tie up a lot of public safety resources to respond. The challenge was uh, being able to uh, close it off, secure it, uh, doing that in a way that, that wasn't going to be excessively expensive either because it's a large area uh, to be able to to put you know cameras and you know, alarm notifications, things like that uh, was probably impractical. The condition of the steam tunnels, given how old they are, has always been top of mind for the facilities department. Mark says maintenance happens frequently and there are several big repairs scheduled for the next few years. Um, there is a plan to uh, replace and reinforce some of the older tunnels that need a little work. And so that's, that's a project that we have um, that will be coming up in the next few years. And the replacement of these uh, brackets, th these have been replaced. I those aren't original, but that's also something that we check and maintain and make sure that those brackets are in good shape because that's what's holding up our pipes. What's your head here? Mark says the tunnels are prepared to carry on heating and cooling generations of Salukis. Our journey underneath SIU exposed us to another world and gave us new appreciation for a system that never stops keeping Salukis comfortable. Well, that wraps up another edition of Saluki Sleuths. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. I wish we could tell you where they are, but we can't. So I want to thank our university experts for all their help in making this uh, program possible. And keep sending in all your ideas. We want your feedback. But until then, go dogs. <laughs>